Hello friends. Welcome back to my channel Calibration Academy. If you are new to this channel, and if you have not subscribed to our channel yet, then please subscribe to our channel, and press the bell icon to get notifications, when we post the video on the channel. In part 2 of this video series, I covered questions number 17 to 35. If you have missed that video, you can find a link in iCard to watch this video. In this third part, I will cover questions number 36 to 57. The 36 number question is, what is low flow cutoff in flow measurement? Low flow cutoff in flow measurement refers to a minimum flow rate below which the flow measurement device or system is unable to provide accurate or reliable measurements. In many flow measurement devices, there is a practical limit to how low of a flow rate they can accurately measure. The 37 number question is, what is empty pipe detection in a magnetic flowmeter? Empty pipe detection in a magnetic flowmeter is a feature or function designed to detect and indicate when the pipe or conduit through which the flowmeter is installed does not contain any flow. For example, it is empty. The 38th number question is, what is level measurement? Level measurement is the process of determining the height of a substance such as liquid, solid, or gas within a container or process vessel. It is essential for monitoring and controlling various industrial processes. The 39 number question is, why level measurement is important? Accurate level measurement is crucial for process control, safety, and efficiency. It ensures that vessels do not overfill or run dry, prevents spills, helps maintain product quality, and facilitates inventory management. The question 40 is, what are the primary methods of level measurement? There are several methods of level measurement, which include, differential pressure, ultrasonic, capacitance, float, and displacer, and guided wave radar. The question 41 is, what factors can affect the accuracy of level measurements? Several factors can influence the accuracy of level measurements, including changes in temperature, pressure, density, and the dielectric constant of the liquid. The vessel's geometry and the presence of foam or turbulence can also affect measurement accuracy. The question 42 is, what are some common applications for level measurement? Level measurement is used in a wide range of applications, such as monitoring and controlling liquid levels in tanks, silos, and pipelines, measuring the interface between two immiscible liquids, ensuring proper ingredient levels in mixing processes, and managing the water level in wastewater treatment plants. Question 43 is, how is the DP transmitter applied to a closed tank? In a closed tank, the bottom of the tank is connected to the high-pressure side of the transmitter, and the top of the tank is connected to the LP side of the transmitter. In this way the vessel pressure is balanced. Question 44 is, how is a DP transmitter applied to an open tank? In an open tank level measurement the LP side is vented to the atmosphere. Whatever pressure acts is on the HP side which is a measure of level. Question 45 is, what is a wet leg and what is a dry leg? A wet leg refers to a section of a pressure instrument, such as a pressure transmitter or differential pressure sensor, where one side is exposed to the process fluid such as liquid or gas, and the other side is in contact with a reference fluid, typically a liquid or gas with known properties. On the other side, in a dry leg setup, there is no separate reference fluid, and the pressure instrument directly measures the pressure from the process itself. Dry leg configurations are commonly used in situations where it's not practical or necessary to use a separate reference fluid. The 46 number question is, what is the purpose of zero trim? Zero trim is useful for compensating mounting position effects or for zero shifts due to static pressure in DP applications. The 47 number question is, how will you check zero of level DP transmitter while it is in line? To check the zero of the DP transmitter, first of all, close both the isolation valves. Then open the vent valve on the LP leg and HP leg drain. Finally, check and adjust zero if necessary. The 48th number question is, what is the purpose of a condensation port in DP level measurement? Condensation port is used to ensure constant pressure at the low pressure side. 
It ensures that the condensation of steam in the impulse lines does not impair the ability to accurately sense differential pressure fluctuations and minimize gauge line error. The 49 number question is, how to remove DPT from service? To remove DPT from service, first of all, close the low pressure side block valve. Secondly, open the equalizing valve. Finally, close the high pressure side block valve. The question number 50 is, how to put DPT back into service? To put DPT back into service, first of all, begin with all valves closed, open the equalizing valve. Then open the high pressure side block valve slowly. Then close the equalizing valve. At the end, open the low pressure side block valve. The question number 51 is, how to do zeroing of DP transmitter? To do zeroing of the transmitter, first of all, close the low pressure side block valve. Then in step 2, open the equalizing valve, and finally, once zeroing is done close the equalizing valve and open the low pressure side block valve. The question number 52 is, what are the advantages and disadvantages of different level measurement methods? Each level measurement method has its own set of advantages and disadvantages. For example, ultrasonic is non-contact, suitable for various liquids, but can be affected by temperature and vapor. Similarly, radar is suitable for a wide range of applications, including corrosive liquids, but can be costly. Differential pressure is reliable and relatively low cost but requires maintenance and can be affected by density changes. Capacitance is suitable for conductive and non-conductive liquids but may require adjustment for the choice of level measurement method depends on the specific application's requirements and conditions. The question number 53 is, what is a pressure transmitter? A pressure transmitter is a device that measures pressure in a fluid such as liquid or gas and converts that pressure into an electrical signal, typically a 4 to 20 mA current signal or a voltage signal. This electrical signal can be transmitted to a control system, where it is used for monitoring and control purposes. The question number 54 is, how does a pressure transmitter work? Pressure transmitters work based on the principle that a change in pressure applied to a sensing element such as a diaphragm or strain gauge results in a proportional change in electrical output. When pressure is applied to the sensing element, it deforms, causing a change in resistance, capacitance, or some other electrical property, which is then converted into an electrical signal that represents the pressure. The question number 55 is, what are the key considerations when selecting a pressure transmitter? When selecting a pressure transmitter, it's essential to consider several factors, including pressure range, compatibility, output signal, and environmental conditions. The question number 56 is, how is a pressure transmitter calibrated and maintained? Pressure transmitters should be calibrated periodically to ensure accurate measurements. Calibration involves comparing the transmitter's output to a known reference standard. Maintenance may also include regular inspection, cleaning, and checking for any damage. Some transmitters can be adjusted to correct for deviations from the specified accuracy. The question number 57 is, what are common applications for pressure transmitters? Pressure transmitters are used in a wide range of applications, including industrial process control, HVAC systems, automotive, oil and gas, and aerospace. Thank you friends for watching this video. I hope this video is helpful for you. Please give us your valuable feedback in comment box. And if you have any questions about this video, then please feel free to ask me your questions in comment box. And please like and share this video with your friends if you think our content is informative for you and others.